was really bittersweet saying goodbye to summer this year. Winnie and I had such a grounding few months taking care of our garden and spending so many peaceful and magical evenings together with our plants, and I'm really, really going to miss it. Now that the summer hustle is over, I want to take you on a journey and show you how we transformed this once abandoned garden into a magical and beautiful sanctuary. So it's officially fall. I can't believe it. <laughs> So if you're new here, I'm Brianna and this is my garden and this property had been really neglected by the previous owners and my dad bought this house in 2019 and I actually lived here before that. My garden did pretty well throughout the summer. Some things did better than others and I thought that before I give you an update of what's going on in here, I would share the story of how my parents and I and Binks transformed this abandoned garden into what it is now. This property came with a deer fenced garden that is about a quarter of the land. It's a massive secret garden that has been totally abandoned and we've been slowly uncovering it. We first started here where there was a working door. It was full of broom, blackberries, roots, trees, kale, and also bits of glass through the soil. So we cleared it all out and took extra care turning the soil, which was actually super nutrient dense. Binks loved every single second of this garden reno. He wanted to be a part of everything. He followed my dad everywhere and was the perfect little helper. As many of you know, my Binks died the following winter and it's been really emotional for me to see this footage and see how much joy he had during this time. Now it's so magical getting to see Winnie enjoy the garden just as much as Banks and I can feel their spirits digging in the dirt together. Give me your pretty, give me your messy, give me your happy, give me your sad. I may be staying, I may be going, I may be left, I may fall apart.
Building the fence was a lot of fun because I learned so much from my dad. About half of the fence was good to go and then we repaired the rest by adding new fencing and digging a trench so that the little critters couldn't dig through to the garden. We needed to reinforce several of the poles and luckily we were able to use a couple of the trees that we had cut down to do that. the fence, cleared out all of the debris and churned the soil, we needed to level it all out and I had no idea how important this step was. Luckily my dad had a leveling machine that looked an awful lot like R2-D2 and he quickly became a part of the family. And I'll be honest, I kind of miss the little guy sometimes. Of course, 
course, one of the most important parts of a garden is the watering and we didn't have any water access in this garden. So my dad had a genius idea to dig a trench through my driveway, lay pipe in the trench and thread a hose from the house across the yard. We strung the hose up along another abandoned garden fence that we have that reaches from my driveway to our newly renovated space. Then this year I hung a hose hanger in the garden and this watering system has worked perfectly. The rest is really history. So we started all of the planting. We really wanted to establish some of the long-term plants in here and that included herbs and roses. We have a ton of roses in here. I think we have over 10 or 15 roses in here actually and we planted a lot of our flowers along the fence line of the garden so that we could utilize as much of the beds for vegetables and food. So this was the entire first year of our garden and the last summer that I had with Binks and I am really grateful that I filmed this whole time so that I have these memories to look back on and to revisit the joy that Binks brought all of us and now I have my beautiful sweet Winnie and I'm also so grateful for him and he truly loves nature in the same way that Binks did and I will say that I do think earth was Binks's element and water is Winnie's element but the parallels between their love for nature is so spectacular and I really think all of the footage that I've caught of the two of them show that. first two years of our garden, because we had started this in 2020, were mostly my mom planting and taking care of the plants. And now this year, I've taken it all on myself and I've been learning so much along the way. I've really grown along with my plants and this process has been a really powerful form of earth magic for me. Connecting with my land in this way has grown abundance within me and has allowed me to access some newfound confidence and independence.
has been so special for me to look back at this footage and see how happy Binks was working with us in the garden and seeing him play in the soil and just watch us. It's really, really um, emotional for me because I hadn't seen some of these clips before because I hadn't watched them all. Of course, Sphinx has died and it's just been a really special time working on this video specifically and seeing him be a part of the process of bringing this garden to life. I feel like his spirit really does live partly in this garden and so that's just been really uh, special for me. The previous owners really neglected this property, not just in the sense that everything was overgrown, but they had dumped thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds of garbage in the forest. And in order to create my enchanted forest and have this garden space to enjoy, I had to clean a lot of it, a lot of it up. And so over the last year and a half, I've cleaned up about 2,000 pounds of garbage by hand. and doing that enabled me to have my enchanted forest and so that's the next project video that you're going to see. I really took on that garbage project right after Binks died and it was a way for me to channel my grief. I hope that you've enjoyed hearing some of these stories about how um, I've been transforming this abandoned property into a magical space with my cats. <laughs> and so why don't I give you an update now of what's been happening in the garden throughout the summer and what I have planted for the winter. Okay, let's start at the front beds here. This bed is just whatever. It's just totally overgrown with mint and wild geranium and then I also have just some other random flowers in here and so this this front area is just kind of a hodgepodge. <laughs> this is the kind of garden sea that I had created with the rock wall. My alyssum looks so so beautiful and all of my dahlias all throughout the garden look amazing. They've been really, really thriving. They got so much wider than I ever expected and I'm so, so happy with those. This guy here is probably one of my most favorite things that I planted and it's so unexpected. I just love the color. I love how it's growing so fast and kind of um, attaching to everything along the way. I think it's so beautiful. The things that I planted right here honestly didn't do very well. Those are dahlias as well and you can see the difference. <laughs> I don't really know what happened there. And this is where all of the strawberries are and there's also a really big rose right here and right here. So literally nothing in this bed did well. I didn't get any tomatoes as suspected. My squash has a flower so we'll see how that goes. And my roses didn't do so well this year. They're kind of making a comeback right now. Look how pretty that is in the evening light. But yeah, I think this winter I need to really trim the roses back so that they can thrive next year. I did not get any strawberries at all. The birds totally got them all. So I gotta come up with some strategy for next year. So my beans are doing really, really well. I really like how resilient and easy these are to grow. And so yeah, I'm getting lots of beans and those look great. The lettuce plants did really well and I've totally um, cut those back for the winter. But none of the seeds that I planted came up. Well, except for this one. This one came up, but I think it was actually a plant. So um, I've just planted some purple cabbage here for the winter. And then I also have a few planted around the garden because it says they need full sun, but I don't really have full sun here in the winter. So I tried them in a few different spots. I also have a ton of little foxgloves all over the garden coming up, so that's going to be really fun to see how they come in the spring. I even have one blooming right now, actually. So there's some of the kale that I was talking about. I did not plant this. It just sprouted up and it grows so amazing. Like, it's super, super healthy and grows really, really fast. So, never a shortage of kale around here. So these are all of my beets and I've started harvesting these and these grew so, so well. I've got some really, really great sized beets 
These are parsnips from last year and they were planted too close together. So I'm not really getting anything super great out of those, but I like looking at their tops. <laughs> this bed did pretty well. The thyme is a bit much. I need to cut this back. And I had some calendula just randomly pop up. My Swiss chard did super, super well. And so did my green onions. My peppers right there did not do well at all. Didn't get any from them. My little mullein plant is doing really well. So in this bed, I planted my broccoli and cauliflowers and they didn't do well at all. And I'm wondering if it's because we planted the same plant in this bed last year. So I have one that's kind of doing okay, another that's doing something. So I left those and then I've got my parsley. So I just planted a cabbage and then a bunch of onions for the winter. And I also need to still plant some garlic. So this kale, this is one that we did plant. It's looking amazing. And my Brussels sprouts look absolutely incredible. They are doing so well. However, I literally just realized that this one is covered in these little bugs. They're little bugs. They must be like aphids or something, so I need to do some research. I'm really disappointed because this plant was doing so well. So here are all my squashes. And again, they're struggling. I think I planted them too late and they're just struggling. Um, I may have made a mistake by planting this dahlia right here because it could be taking away from the nutrients of the squashes. This plant here has lots coming in, lots of little different guys, but the problem is is that they are growing some zucchini, but they just start to rot like that one in there. Um, yeah, so those are struggling. Um, oh, there's some coming in on that one. I don't even know what kind of squash this is. I think it was an acorn and literally nothing is happening here. <laughs> so I've got lots of peas. And I just love the little pea tendrils. Look at them, they're so cute and magical. This is one of my most favorite things to see in the garden and also eat. I just brought this box in as well, and these are all of the bulbs that I'm going to be planting in October for the spring. I think I have some in the shed too. And then also, I still need to plant these garlic. And I've got a huge pack of daffodils. Also, I didn't plant potatoes this year. Um, but I just dug these up from last year's crop and hopefully they taste good. Thank you so much for coming on this garden journey with me. It's really exciting to be able to finally share all of that footage from so many years ago and to also look back and see my beautiful Binks in all of his glory. And I hope that you enjoyed these updates and I will see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.